Welcome to the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit. These weekly podcasts feature expository messages delivered to edify the soul. Now let's join Pastor Dave as he presents this week's message. If you'll take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Revelation. And tonight we're going to begin with chapter 4. And actually we will uh, look at all of chapter 4 tonight. Chapter 4 is a kind of a short chapter. It's only 11 verses. And chapter 4 is the door to heaven opens and John sees into heaven. So are you ready to go to heaven tonight? Yeah. Now, this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, passage of Scripture. So Revelation chapter 4, and we're going to talk about the throne tonight. The throne is in chapter 4, the central feature, but there's a couple things we need to cover before we talk about the throne. First of all, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Okay, so chapter 2 and chapter 3, we have the letters to the seven churches, which represents the church age. Chapter 4 is what happens after the church age. So we're seeing something in the future that the Lord Jesus himself is disclosing to John the Revelator. Verse 2, and immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Okay, let's stop right there. So the very first thing is this wonderful sight that we have here, this view of the church and or we've had the view of the church age and now we look into heaven and we're there with John and we're looking there and we see a throne. And if a door was opened to you into heaven right now and you could peer in, this is what you too would see. You would see this throne and the throne occupies the entire the entirety of this vision of John. It's all about the throne and the things on it, around it, in it, coming out of it, before it. So it's very fascinating, this fourth chapter, because the throne is the central feature, and we begin with what's on the throne. I found this interesting. Uh, I think that any elementary Greek student would love chapter 4 because it uses the preposition so nicely. We have uh, one who sat on the throne. We have what's around the throne. We have something coming out of the throne, something before the throne, something in the midst of the throne. So all of these prepositions are used, but all of them describing the, um, the circumstance or the environment of this throne, which is heaven, this throne room, which is heaven and the throne that is there. So he goes in and he sees this throne set in heaven. Now, Before we go any further with that, what does a throne represent? Sovereignty. If you were to go to England and see the Queen's throne, that throne represents her authority and right to rule that nation. I remember when uh, I traveled to Russia many years ago, been a long time ago, 95, wasn't it? 95. And uh, uh, one of the things that I was blessed, privileged to do was to go to the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg and see the throne in the Winter Palace, and it was magnificent. Uh, it, I've never seen so much gold and silver in one place. And jewels, this, this throne set up on a dais, and before it was this beautifully polished marble floor, and the throne was gold and had this lovely fur on it and, and jewels embedded in the arms and legs of, the, of this throne. It was absolutely gorgeous. And, of course, that's what John is seeing here. Of course, he's not seeing a, 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 an earthly throne, but he's seeing the throne of heaven, which represents the sovereignty of God. And there's somebody occupying the throne. Notice verse 3. He that sat, so there's somebody on the throne, was to look upon like jasper, like a jasper and a sardine stone. Now, notice that John does not give us dimensions. He doesn't say he's fair-headed, you know, he's got arms and legs and feet and hands and a nose and ears and eyes. He just says, this is what he looked like, 
His glory was like this stone, the color of these stones, jasper and sardine. So this diffusion, the effusement of the glory of God was colored like these stones. We don't see anything about a person or, or anthropomorphism here. All we see is God's glory. It's colored like these stones are colored. It's radiant like these stones are radiant. So someone seated there, it's a person, but it's a person whose glory is so bright it looks like the brightest gem. And he's seated on the throne. So we have someone on the throne. Now, he goes on to describe this throne room and he says, around the throne there are things. So, number one, there's a rainbow. But this isn't your normal rainbow. Because if you notice there in verse 3, it says, There was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. So it's green, this rainbow. In whatever way that a rainbow looks like an emerald, that's what we have. At least we know something about the coloring here. So we have this beautiful green arch that surrounds this throne, this circle that's surrounding the throne. And there's something else around the throne besides this rainbow, which is 24 seats. They're also set around the throne, verse 4. And round about the throne were four and 20 seats. And upon the seats I saw four and 20 elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now, who do you suppose this is? This is the church. This is the church in all the ages. Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, we have the completion of redemption with Israel and with the church all sitting there before God. 24 thrones and 24 elders representing all the church age from the Old Testament to the New Testament seated before God. And notice these are redeemed peoples because they're clothed in white. And we know that that white raiment is given to those who have been redeemed and they have crowns of gold upon their head. Didn't we just read about that? No, that, this morning we just did Ephesus. We're going to see a crown of gold given to those who endure. I ought to forget what church it's in. Um, let's see if I can just see it real quickly. Yeah, oh, well, they're here in verse uh, chapter 2 in the book of Revelation. Um, we see the crown of life given to those that endure. And so there's another crown. We have a crown of righteousness in the epistles and a crown of life in the epistles. And here we have this crown of gold decorating the heads of those uh, elders seated upon the throne in their white raiment. They have achieved their, uh, they have achieved glory because they are seated now with those crowns on their heads, which is what we're going to receive as well. So the church is seated about this throne And around this throne is also this beautiful emerald rainbow. Okay, now we have something coming out of the throne. We have, and so far we've had no noise, nothing has been said. John looks into heaven, he sees the throne, he sees the one on the throne, he sees the rainbow around the throne, the elders that are around the throne, on their seats around the throne. Now we hear something. Out of the throne were... Proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. All of this also represents God's sovereignty over creation and his power. God's power is demonstrated in what proceeds from the throne and the voices there representing God's very word. So it's even there in heaven at his throne room. God's word, God's power, God's authority, all being represented by these lightnings and thunderings and voices that are there coming out of the throne. All right, so we have on the throne, around the throne, out of the throne, and now we have before the throne. There were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So God's very presence is illuminated here by these lamps, and these lamps represent his spirit. And these are the spirits that go before him. These are the spirits that light the way of salvation. These are the spirits that light the word of God. This is the spirit of God himself standing before God in this throne room. And verse 6 begins, And before the, before the throne was a sea of glass like unto crystal. This pavement of crystal 
Can you imagine what that effect had in that throne room as it reflected the lightning flashes and the burning lamps and the emerald rainbow that was around the throne? This must have been a dazzling display. This is not unusual. I mentioned just a moment the, uh, the throne of uh, the Winter Palace of the Russian Tsars in St. Petersburg. An Old Testament reference to a king's court is um, about um, Xerxes in the book of Esther. And he had an elaborate pavement of white and black marble that was created for his throne. And it was very large and expansive. And that's the idea here. This sea of throne, or this sea of, of glass, like crystal, is before the throne. That's how large it is. It's like a sea. And so all before this throne and around this throne, we have this, this pavement of crystal, which reflects everything in that room. And its effect is to glorify God, because that's the effect that all of this has. It's all about God's glory. So the seven lamps are burning. There's the sea of glass like unto crystal. And then notice five. It says, in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, we have these living creatures. Now, the King James has here uh, beasts. I, I think I like living creatures better because the Greek actually uses that term living and creature here. And I don't know how we've ended up with the term beast. But if you look back at uh, the book of Isaiah and the book of Ezekiel, especially Ezekiel, he talks about living creatures before the throne. So this matches nicely with what Ezekiel saw. So around the throne and coming out of the throne or in the midst of the throne, we have the appearance of these living creatures. Now, we have them described here. They're full of eyes before and behind. So in the front and in the back, they can see. The first was a, the first beast was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. Now, remember, we have eyes in the front, eyes in the back, eyes within. These creatures can see everything all at once. And, the, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. Now, let's think about the beasts just for a second. We have this beautiful description that John gives us. He looks in through that open door and arrives there in the throne room. And he sees the throne and what's on the throne, the person on the throne. He sees, uh, he sees the thing that is before the throne, the things that are around the throne, the things that are coming out of the throne, and the things in the midst of the throne. We have these creatures. And they're very curious, aren't they? We have one who's like a lion, one like a calf, one like... He has a face of a man. We don't know what else he looks, how else he looks like a man, but at least he has a face of a man. And the fourth, like a flying eagle. So these all represent the created order. God is making these creatures to represent all created order. And, of course, these are, these are other creatures like us, but they have a heavenly role, and God has made them to represent all the created order. And notice what they do. All the created order represented by these four beasts, night and day say, holy, holy, holy. They stand before God's throne and they worship him. Let's just take a, can we take a field trip real quick? Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 6. Let's take a field trip. Let's see what Isaiah saw. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So here are these seraphims, these burning ones, are also 
praising God, the very same language as these four beasts who are before or in the midst of the throne of God. All right, now let's look at, we're still taking our field trip. Let's now make a stop over in Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 5. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And every one had four faces. And every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under the wings and on their four sides. And they four had their faces and their wings. And their wings were joined one to another. And they turned not when they went. And they went every one straight forward. For the likeness of their faces they had four. They four had the faces of a man, the face of a lion on the right side. The four had the face of an ox on the left side. The four had the faces of an eagle. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward. Whither the spirit was to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. So here we have creatures something like what we have in the book of Revelation, yet a little bit different. So we have seraphim. We have Ezekiel's description of different creatures in his book. And then we have John's description here in the book of Revelation of these four creatures and their sole job is to praise and glorify our God. And these are coming out of or in the midst of the throne. They say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And this is a cue. This is like Tim. When Tim stands up here to sing, And he begins to sing, what's our job? We sing with him, right? He starts to lead us in the hymn, and we start the same thing. We start saying the same words. Well, the four and twenty elders must have been good Baptists because they knew that, and they they saw the leaders of the praise starting, those four beasts, and what did they do? They join in as well. They worshiped him. The elders fell down before him that sat on the throne there in verse 10 and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So the church has the last word here. The first sound was the lightning and the thunderings and the voices. The second sound was the voices of all creation represented by these four creatures praising God. And the last sound is the church joining in a chorus of praise. And we have it recorded here for us in verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. This is before the throne. So we have on the throne. Let me find it. On the throne, around the throne, out of the throne, before the throne, in the midst of the throne, and then we come back before the throne as all of them gather together to praise God. Now, what is not in this picture? There's no evil here, is there? No more Nicolaitans. No more false apostles. There's no more sin. All we have is white apparel. There's joy in this place. God's presence is in this place. God's spirit is in this place. All the perfect created order is gathered here in this place. The beauty of his creation is before us. And it all sparkles in cleanness as we hear the church cry, you alone are worthy. You have your hymnal right there. Why don't you pick your hymnal up with me? Turn to hymn number three. We sing this hymn quite often. It's a wonderful hymn. But... You'll notice the, the scripture reference there at the top of the page above the, above the staff. It says, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power, Revelation 4, 11. And so we sing a hymn much like the church that's gathered in heaven. Worthy of worship, worthy of praise, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all the glad songs we can sing, worthy of all the offerings we bring you're worthy father creator you are worthy savior sustainer you are worthy 
worthy and wonderful, worthy of worship and praise. Let that be our prayer and hymn tonight as we close. Jesus will meet you. Thanks for listening to this week's message. Please join us again next time for another installment of the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit.